Hey vocalists, I'm Anna. Welcome to another edition of Vocalist News. This week we have a bit of a special edition talking about how Taylor Swift made it. We talk about how she went from helping her parents out on a Christmas tree farm to becoming America's sweetheart and international superstar. Let's start back at the beginning. One of LA's top vocal coaches, Lisa Popale, recently wrote an article for The Voice Council magazine exploring how Taylor Swift made it, and we're happy to bring an adapted version of that article. So Taylor Swift was born in Pennsylvania State, and she grew up on a Christmas tree farm. Her father was a financial advisor, and her mother was a stay-at-home mom who took care of her and Taylor's brother. In her pre-adolescent years, Swift became interested in musical theater, and she started performing in school productions at fairs, coffee houses, karaoke contests, Boy Scout meetings, and sporting events. She was also traveling to New York for vocal coaching lessons. Eventually, Swift started directing her attention to songwriting, and in 2003, Swift and her parents started working with New York-based music manager Dan Dimtro. Now, Dan Dimtro played a key role in building up Taylor's career. He got her modeling gigs and uh, meetings with some major uh, record labels. He was actually the one who got her the development deal with RCA Records. When Taylor was 14 years old, the Swifts all moved to Tennessee to uh, support Taylor's musical ambitions. It was through her deal with RCA Records that Taylor met established songwriter Liz Rose, who was to become an integral and long-term songwriting collaborator with Taylor Swift. Swift eventually parted with Dam Dimtro and RCA Records and signed an agreement with Big Machine Records, a move that ended in a lawsuit between Dimtro and the Swifts. Scott Swift, Taylor's father, bought a 3% stake in Big Machine, valued at a cost of $120,000. In October 2006, Taylor Swift finally drops her first self-titled country album, and it got rave reviews across the board from the likes of Rolling Stone and the New York Times. Her breakout single, Tim McGraw, off that album, peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. So Swift toured a lot between 2006 and 2007, and she really established a connection with her fan base. Uh, she was always using social media to post updates and relate to her fans, and uh, she even conducted some meet and greets before and after concerts. Taylor went on to receive some prestigious awards, for example, Country Music Association's Horizon Award for Best New Artist, the Academy of Country Music Awards Top New Female Vocalist, Award and the American Music Awards Favorite Country Female uh, Artist. These were huge honors for her and uh, she did great to deserve them. What can vocalists learn from Taylor Swift's experiences? Well, the first one is you can't, or it's really hard to at least to do to find success alone. Uh, a supportive family and friends will really keep you motivated and help you with a large list of contacts and connections to help you move forward. The second thing, and this is probably the one aspect that all indie artists and artists in general can agree on, it's that money matters. Having access to it can open doors and uh, secure the services of top people in the music industry. Number three is don't ever think you're too good to be an opening act uh, for a certain musician or for a certain band. Perform anywhere for anyone because you never know who you'll meet, who'll see you, and uh, who will like what you do. And the fourth and final thing is connect with your fan base just like Taylor Swift did. She has millions of very supportive followers and uh, your fans will repay you by spreading the good word about your music. So that's it for how Taylor Swift made it. Uh, make sure you check out Lisa Popale's last article about how Lady Gaga made it. That's it for this week's Vocalist News. This is our last episode before the holidays, so on behalf of the Vocalist Magazine team, I wish you a happy new year, happy holidays, and we'll see you back in January 2015.